This is an unsponsored video that contains products provided without charge by the manufacturer for demonstration purposes. All opinions are my own. Today on Handy Dad TV, a battle of the backpack sprayers. Coming up. So it seems everybody in the lawn care community right now is going nuts over when to put down your pre-emergent and they have everybody going out and buying these thermometers because it has to do with soil temperature. Well, I say that's all horse hockey. It doesn't matter. For 30 years I've been a homeowner and how did I ever know when to put down my crabgrass control? Very simply, with this. This is a forsythia. That, when it blooms, it's time to put down your crabgrass control. Simple enough. Welcome to Handy Dad TV. I'm Chris Heider, your virtual dad in the cloud, and today we're talking about four gallon backpack sprayers. Two that look seemingly identical, but they're not. These are from Sprayers Plus, and I got these demo units to show you the differences between the two. And uh, there's a lot of reviews of this one online because it's electric and it's very popular. But this one is a little cheaper and has some features that are actually better than this one. Now, they both have the same type of wand. The hoses are slightly different. The tips that come with them, at least the brass adjustable tips, they are the same. And you could use these for either making a, it's adjustable, so it either comes out as a stream or it comes out as a fine mist. They both come with extra tips. And these are flat nozzles. The Model 100 comes with the blue and the yellow. The yellow is, let's see, the yellow tip is 90 degrees and the blue tip is 110 degrees. So this one has a wider spray. The electric model comes with a blue and the gray tip. Again, blue is 110 degrees. The gray one is 135 degrees. So again, a wider spray pattern. Like I said, they're both four gallon tanks. They have you probably can't see it. There's a guide on the side for both gallons and liters. They both have the same exact caps and they also have a strainer inside. The straps are nice and padded. They're both the same on both models. The differences come in on the way that they are powered. This one is electric and it contains a rechargeable battery that fits in the back here. And it has a switch that gets that turns the power on. Now one thing you have to do with the electric one is replace that orange elbow with this black one. The black one has a screen on it and this is meant to draw up the um, whatever juice is in here. And you want it pointing down so that it picks up as much liquid as it possibly can. The orange one is actually solid and what it does is it, for storage, it holds moisture in the pump so the pump never dries out completely. Which of course means if there's moisture left in the pump then you can't really leave it in the shed to freeze over the winter. Now the Model 100 is a manual sprayer. This has a handle on the side that you can turn around and then lock into place. So while that's on, you pump and you can spray at the same time. So I've seen pros actually use this kind because they never run out of battery. <laughs> they can constantly pump as they're walking. Now, the default configuration is to operate the pump with your left hand and spray with your right. But if you're left-handed, you can reverse this so that the, the pump is on the right-hand side. They give you a wrench to do that. The only maintenance on the unit is they give you some grease. What's the grease for? Well, inside the handle, let me get a little paper towel. This is just water, by the way. I never put water in it. They test it at the factory, so that's why there's water in here. This is the plunger that sits in here that you actuate when you pull the trigger, and it's got some seals that need to be greased. So once a year, I plan on, you know, in the spring when I start it up, I would um, just grease that up. They also feature a strainer in the handle too, so if your performance is affected by what you're spraying, you can check this and clean it. The only other thing you need to grease is right here, if you're using this uh, adjustable spray tip. Again, you want to keep these seals nice and smooth with the grease so that they never dry out. 
Now you may be thinking that the electric one is an easy choice over the manual one, right? I mean, you don't have to pump it and it gives you consistent pressure all the time, right? Well, there is a benefit to this one that that one doesn't have, and that is agitation. It's built into the pump. As you pump it, it sp spins around the liquid that's in here, so it's constantly recirculating inside the tank. This one does not have that. So, if you're going to spray powders that you add to water, something with agitation is a good idea. And that's exactly my test case today. I'm going to be using it with prodiamine granules. Prodiamine is a very popular crabgrass control, but it comes in a wettable dissolvable granule. No, WDG is wettable dispersible granule, which means you add it to water and it immediately, it's like freeze dried, it instantly dissolves. However, it needs to be agitated. So the manual one probably will give better performance than the electric one. I don't know, I'm gonna test them both out. Now the electric one is gonna be more expensive than the manual one for obvious reasons, convenience and consistency of spray and whatnot. People are just lazy, but that's fine. <laughs> now the electric one is gonna be more expensive than the manual. <laughs> now the electric one is gonna be more expensive than the manual one, but with the manual one, you'll never run out of battery and you'll never have to replace the batteries, so. I don't know, it's a trade-off, plus it's got agitation. But we're gonna put them both through the test. I'm gonna do my front yard with one, I'm gonna do the backyard with another, I'm gonna put down my prodiamine with these two sprayers and give you my feedback at the end. I did a quick test with the three nozzles to see which one I liked the best. And I would have gone with 135, except for the weird pattern it had on the outside. So I went with 110 degrees in both of the sprayers for this test. All right, I'm starting with three and a half gallons because I have 3,500 square feet. So I'm going to try and see if I can do one gallon per thousand square feet. And by the way, this is just an initial test with water. It's a little heavy. To calibrate the sprayer, I filled it with water. I walked over my lawn and I saw how much water I used as I was just going a normal pace. And I wound up using three gallons of water. So now I know whenever I want to apply something to my front yard, I just have to dilute it in three gallons of water. All right, now I'm gonna mix this. So PPE is important, gloves for my hands. I got boots and I put um, pants on. I'm testing out a number of different gloves and I'm gonna be doing a uh, review on them. Stay tuned for that. This is the product that I'm using. It's Prodiamine 65 WDG, which stands for wettable dispersible granules. Now this is a five pound container that I bought online. Uh, the link is in the description. It wasn't cheap, it was $65. But the good thing is I'm only gonna use half a pound a year. So this will last me 10 years. So what I'm gonna be putting down is two ounces. My, my yard is 14,000 square feet, 7,000 in the front, 7,000 in the back. So what I've figured out is I need to do two ounces of product for the front and two ounces for the back. All right, you know me, I love to explain the math. So let's take a look at prodiamine here. This five pound jug is 80 ounces and it cost me 64.50. Now the rate to put it down is 0.55 ounces per thousand square feet. So that comes out to 44 cents for each one of those thousand square feet. Well, my lawn is 14,000 square feet. That means it's $6.21 per application. Compare that to the other products, including the two granulars at the bottom, which I used last year, and you could quickly see how the sprayer is actually gonna pay for itself just by using it with the prodiamine. And then I get to use it for so many other things as well. So it's definitely a worthwhile investment. Now here's the math that I use to figure out how much to put in the application in the front. So I'm using 0.55 divided by two because I'm gonna do two split applications. That gives me 0.28 ounces per app. I multiply that by seven because I have 7,000 square feet in the front and that comes out to 1.925 and I round that up to two ounces and that's what I put in the sprayer. I'm using a postal scale with a container on it that I bought purposely for this purpose. So 
Okay, 2.0 perfectly. So what I'm gonna do is make a mark on here so that all I have to do is fill it to that level every time. I don't have to weigh it. Now you can see I wrote on here two ounces of prodiamine and I will only use this container for prodiamine. And I have a paint stirrer on my drill and it's a good idea to just have the water circulating as you pour it in. Needless to say, I'll only use this paint stirrer for chemicals going forward. And I'll rinse it off before I put it away. I'm going to fill it up to three gallons because based on my... I meant to say, based on my earlier test, that I could put three gallons on my normal pace walk throughout the front yard. Put that on good and tight and shake it up. Extra agitation never hurts. Alright, that worked out really well. I had just a little bit left and I just did the edge right by the sidewalk a second time because I always get crabgrass right by the sidewalk but that was three gallons with two ounces of product in it so the three gallons was perfect for me to do my front yard the only thing I don't like about it is it's got this lip on the inside and it's impossible to empty it completely so you wind up getting as much as possible but it never comes out Never all comes out. Not as much room in this one. All right, first time using a pump sprayer. My arm is tired. <laughs> That's a workout, I must say. But certainly doable. It is a little cheaper than the 105EX. This is the 100, this is the 105EX. But I gotta say, for the money, I think the electric is worth it. Now, if you think this is too expensive, you're probably gonna take a look at other brands, and one of them is gonna be Chapin. You're gonna see a Chapin. That one is cheaper than this but it's not worth it. I gotta tell you, I had one myself, and Ryan Noor had one as well. They both leaked. Now, what are the odds of two YouTubers having them that leaked? I got marking blue all the way down my legs last year when I used it. They got in my boots. It still gets on my socks whenever I put socks in my boots. It's just awful. I threw it away. It wasn't even worth it to send it back for repair. So that's when I got in touch with Sprayers Plus, and they sent me these two for review. But I gotta say, they both work great, but this one, for the money, the electric is definitely the way to go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.